Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about the Maxwell equations and there are four equations in it. Uh, I'm only going to talk about three in this video and the Maxwell equations are all about electromagnetic stuff. Electric stuff and magnetic stuff. Now let's get into the first equation. The first one is, the first one looks like this. Firstly, we have to know what this thing is. If you see a arrow, th a arrow thing in top of something, that means this is a vector or a vector field. And a vector is kind of an arrow thingy. In physics, it's typically a thing, maybe a force hitting somewhere. If this vector is showing us the strongness of the force would be the length of the vector length of the arrow and where the arrow is heading would be the, the, where the force is heading to. A vector field is let's say you take a certain amount of area the atmosphere in some sort of part in earth and uh, winds are gonna blow and the uh, and the air in the atmosphere is gonna move around. Well there's gonna be a lot of movements so Let's say there's some sort of curvy movement like this of the air. And now these are all vectors of air. Uh, these are all vectors that are showing us the movement of air. And now this field of vectors, now we can call them the vector field. In this vector field that are showing us the atmosphere, there are vectors that are showing us the movement of the air molecules. Yeah, that's how vectors and vector fields work. This is a vector field and this is the magnetic field. So if we have a magnet here uh, in north and south, now we're going to have the ma uh, magnet, uh, the vectors that looks uh, look like that. Well, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of vectors the vectors going like that from the north to the south and well you know that drawing where it looks a bit like this well you can think of all those as vectors small little vectors going from the north to the south in this shape uh, this whole thing we call it a magnetic field and that magnetic field we can think of here as a vector field. The magnetic field is this, this thing. And now let's talk about this thing. This upside down, uh, this upside down triangle with a, uh, with a arrow on it. This, uh, this multiplied by some vector field means the divergence of that vector field. And what is divergence? It is a amount of vector in a vector field. It basically means in a certain amount of the vector field, how much is coming in or how much is going out. So we can think of a, a easy example is a bathtub. Let's say this is a bathtub. If you look from the side, it's gonna look a bit like that. And let's say we put a tab over here and we'll let the water flow in. So, uh, and then let's say the whole, the drain is so, uh, for some reason over here. So the water is gonna uh, flow through and come out over here. Now, if you look from abo above, cut the tap out, the water is gonna look like it's appearing from over here. And then, uh, and then it's gonna flow And then now it's gonna uh, all get pushed into one uh, one drainage hole, and well, the water is gonna uh, start flowing, uh, appearing, kinda. Well, the water is gonna start coming in from over here, so the all the vectors over here are going out, and then it's gonna f go, uh, gonna flow like that, and it's gonna all. The vectors are going to all just point into one spot over the drainage area. Now, the vectors over here 
are all going outwards. So over here, the divergence of this part is positive. A positive and over here, the vectors are going out as uh, going out as much as they're going in. So, well, the same amount of vectors are going out as they're going in, uh, coming in. So over here, the divergence is zero, and over here, the uh, all the vectors are coming in, but none are going out. So over here. The divergence is negative. It works like that. That's what divergence is. So the divergence of the magnetic field is gonna be how much these magnetic vectors are coming in and going out. And the divergence equals zero for the magnetic field. Equation is showing us that. That means on any point of this magnetic field, on any magnetic field, the divergence is going to be zero. Well, it makes sense because if you look at any point, well, there's gonna be uh, magnetic vectors all heading from the north to the south. If you take any point like the over here, well, as you see, some are going in, some are going out, and they're gonna be the exact same. So. Well, the amount that's coming in and going out are going to be the same. So zero, the divergence is zero in this area. And if you look over here, well, these are going uh, coming in. The amount that came in are all just going out again. And well, that's going to be zero too. And, but what about this part and this part? Maybe those are kind of different, but no, because if you look inside the magnet, the, the vectors are gonna still flow from, uh, from the S to the, uh, from the south pole to the north pole this time, because, well, it's inside the magnet, but it's still gonna flow inside too. And that will make it so that even in these areas, the divergence is gonna be zero. And that's what this uh, equation shows. The divergence of the magnetic field is zero. On any point, you can't find a source of these vectors just pouring out but not going anywhere. That's what this shows. You can't find a monopole magnet. Uh, uh, magnet. And now we're gonna look at the second one. We're gonna now look at this one. The second equation we're gonna look at looks like this. Well, this is a thing that shows us divergence, and this is now the electric field. The thing under here is epsilon naught, and we call the thing on the top rho. Now, firstly, the electric field. Uh, the electric field is a vector field. Um, we can see when, uh, I'll, I'll just draw it. Uh, this is an uh, electric field and there's a positively charged something in the middle and These vectors are the vectors for where a po uh, Where a positively charged thing somewhere in this field is gonna uh, move towards So if we have a positively charged something over here uh, the force is going to be the charge of the thing multiplied by the uh, multiplied by the vector over here that vector so if this has a charge of positive 1 coulomb that multiplied by this ve uh, this vector it's uh, so, uh, that vector is going to be how much the uh, the thingy the positively charged thingy is gonna get pushed outwards and now if it was over here and the same charge well the vector is more shorter so it's gonna get uh, uh it's gonna get less pushing and now if this was negatively charged well that uh, the q would be negative so if so 
it would uh, it would get pulled inwards and well that force is gonna also gonna get smaller and smaller as we go outwards because those vectors are smaller shorter and so the electric field over here basically shows where a positively charged thing is going the arrows are and now this is the divergence uh, the first part over here we see the divergence of the electric field and now we have to see this part and the thing on the top called rho is what it is is it's the density of charge in a certain area so if this is the whole electric field we're gonna divide the total amount of charge in here uh, now let's say this thing in the middle is gonna have a charge of n and the space that the electric field is taking up let's say that space is m now uh, then the rho is n over m simple basically is the density of the charge how much how much charge is in a certain area so that's what uh, that's what that is and the thing in the bottom is called the uh, called epsilon naught it is a constant the epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum basically what that is is how much uh, drag is given by vacuum complete vacuum it is a constant for our universe just think it as some constant that is the dragging of vacuum from this whole equation we can learn that divergence of the electric field increases as the charge density increases so basically the thing in the mid uh, the charge of the thing in the middle if it increases the uh permittivity is gonna also i uh, not permittivity the divergence is also gonna increase and well if this was a universe with very high a very high uh dragging of the vacuum the dragging force of the vacuum if that was high the divergence of the electric field w won't be as much as if it were low uh, we can see uh, we can learn that from this equation and now let's and the third equation we're gonna look at looks like this this is kind of complicated looking well now we can see some familiar stuff like this one the electric field and this one the magnetic field now also uh, these two things are integrals now firstly this thing dl and the vector sign to understand dl we're gonna imagine a certain surface called s it's gonna be a circle and now we're gonna have little vectors on the perimeter of s and all of those uh little vectors are gonna be dl's and the electric field multiplied by the dl vector is gonna be basically if we have the electric field flowing like that if it's if the electric field is going to be flowing like that for this dl the electric field and the dl is aligned perfectly so the electric field flowing through dl is going to be maximized so, uh, basically the contribution of the electric field through uh, through dl over here is uh, the contribution is going to be maximized over here and uh, if we look over here it is perfectly not contributing the electric field is so over here the contribution is going to be zero 
the electric field is not going to do anything to the DL over here. Well, so basically that's, that's what the electric field multiplied by the DL vector is going to be. And now if you look over here, the DS vector, DS is, uh, we're going to have the same surface, the circle S, and we are going to, uh, we are going to have a very small area called DA. Well, you can imagine the DA as just a dot, but, well, it's going to be a little area on the surface S and we're gonna uh, kind of like that a vector that is going uh, coming out of the uh, out of DA uh, DS uh, this is DS DS is going to be a it's gonna be a vector coming out vertically from DA so from that little dot of an area, DS is, is going to be a vector coming out vertically from that little dot of an area. And so, well, what integrals are, are they are basically summing all the things that are coming after it. So these things are going to get added up by the integrals. So this uh, this first part is going to be on the perimeter of the surface s that's what c means means and all the contribution of the electric field through d uh, the all the uh, added up version of dl so basically the contribution of the electric field on the perimeter of the surface s that is going to be the first part and this part is gonna be, well, there's gonna be loads and loads of DSs. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of DA covering the whole S. And now the DSs are gonna be summed up, uh, summed up and that's gonna make, if we have a magnet here, uh, this is gonna be the contribution of the magnetic field on the DSs. So how much, uh, how much magnetic field is coming out of S. How much uh, how much magnetic field is coming out vertically from S. How much uh, magnetic field is going through the surface S. That is going to be this part. The sum of these things. Well, that's basically what that and this is. And now the fi a final thing from this equation. This minus d over dt uh, over dt well this d minus d is multiplied to the integral of this thing dt is basically the difference of time and we have the minus d up over there uh, ignore the negative sign right now and if we have dt d x over dt and let's say d uh, let's say x equals distance and d would equal the di uh, d would uh, mean the difference so dx equals difference of space and it is over difference of time so dx over dt would mean the difference of space over time over the difference of time so uh, a certain amount of time passes and a certain amount of um, difference of space happens so basically this is showing us movement uh, I mean speed so this is basically speed if we have a plane over here and there is a thing over here and a certain amount of time passed and now there's a difference in space it's somewhere over here so that now we can see that this thing as time passed it moved so the d's are just differences so this is the difference of the difference 
of the magnetic field passing through the surface S over the difference of time. As time pass, the difference of the magnetic field going through the surface S over time is going to equal the electric field uh, contributing to the circumference, I mean the parameter of surface S. So to sum it up, this is what this means is very sim simple. If we have a wire, a circular wire that uh, electric uh, electricity can run through and we have a magnet um, and now we move the magnet inside and outside so if we do uh, if we move the magnet like this well we can think of with this wire as the surface s because it looks like a circle and the magnetic field going through that circle is going to change because we're moving it and because there is change happening so this the difference even though there's a negative sign but whatever the difference is gonna exist now and there's gonna be a difference which means that this thing electric field going through the uh, parameter of surface s is gonna now exist in some way it is gonna have some sort of value which means there is electri electricity going through the wires so that's how we make electricity by moving magnets through wires so this whole equation is basically st uh, stating if you move magnets through wires you're gonna get electricity and yeah, I think that's all, all for this equation, and also that was all for this video. Um, thank you for watching, and bye!